Global central bank chiefs are in the U.S. state of Wyoming for the annual Jackson Hole Symposium. Fed Chief Jerome Powell delivered his speech on Friday and said that while the U.S. inflation is going down, it is not enough. And that could mean another rate hike by the Fed. Nathan King starts us off. This key speech in Wyoming was watched everywhere from here at the White House, Wall Street and the rest of the world. The big question for everyone is when will the U.S. Federal Reserve stop raising rates essentially in the last couple of years from zero to 5.5 percent? And the answer from Fed Chair Jerome Powell is, well, the fight against inflation may not be done yet. We have tightened policy significantly over the past year. Although inflation has moved down from its peak, a welcome development, it remains too high. We are prepared to raise rates further if appropriate and intend to hold policy at a restrictive level until we are confident that inflation is moving sustainably down toward our objective. The good news for the American economy is inflation is way down from a peak of around 9% to around 3%. Uh, right now. But the question is, is the battle done? Have the rate rises done their job or do they need more? The big questions for now is, will we see a rate rise at the next meeting in mid-September at the Federal Reserve Board? The smart money seems to be saying they'll try and take a pause. But when do they hit what's called the R-star point, the Goldilocks moment, when rates uh, don't have to be raised anymore, do not have a negative effect uh, on growth, but do not have a inflationary effect on the economy and the Fed is still worried because hiring and unemployment have really been fantastic for the American consumer not necessarily good at slowing uh, the economy they are very worried about uh, wages still going up we'll wait and uh, see what happens but of course this is very important because if the Fed is done with raising rates then the big question means when do they start lowering them again? Will it before, be before the next uh, general election next year in November here? That's very important because mortgage rates are at decades highs. Credit card uh, rates have gone up through the roof. People are paying more for everything from cars to computers. And this, of course, has a negative effect on the American consumer and the White House's chances of re-election behind me. So everything is in the balance. Nathan King, CGTN, but the White House. For market reaction, and this certainly was, John Terrett has this from the NYSE. What a week it was on Wall Street, beginning with Arm Holdings out of Cambridge in the United Kingdom, a chip design company announcing its long-awaited IPO. It'll be at the NASDAQ. Instacart on Friday, the U.S. and Canadian food delivery company, it announced an IPO with the idea of kickstarting the rather dormant IPO market when it comes to those kind of tech-led companies. Better.com did come to market in the last week. They fell by about 90% on their first day, but they were up a bit on Friday, and the shares are up about, well, 4% on the Friday session, which I suppose is better than nothing. Also this week, the first Republican debate took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Donald Trump, of course, had a mugshot, the first time a former president has ever had one, and immediately turned it into a business opportunity by putting that mugshot on mugs to drink from and T-shirts and that sort of thing. And Jerome Powell dominating the week, of course, on Friday when he spoke at Jackson Hole. He might have been more hawkish, say the people on Wall Street, than he actually was. Markets were all over the place, as we'll see. In fact, Jerome Powell said that they are navigating by the stars under a cloudy sky, which I think tells you all you need to know. They'll meet to discuss interest rates again on the 19th and 20th of September. So at the end of Friday, the Dow was up 7 tenths of 1%, the Nasdaq 9 tenths of 1%, S&P 500 7 tenths of 1%, Dow down for the second week in a row, the other two in the green for the week. And in the week to come, on Tuesday, consumer confidence, on Wednesday, the ADP private jobs report, on Thursday, the weekly jobless numbers, and on Friday, the government jobs report for the month of August. John Terrence, CGTN, on the trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And for more on the U.S. economy is Mr. Sean Stein-Smith, assistant professor at the Lehman College at City University of New York. Good to see you again. So, you know, I, I've read through a lot of the text from the speech. I don't, uh, and I've, I've heard all the different critics out there, and I don't see a lot of change from what he said uh, a, about a few weeks ago. And I, I'm just wondering if this is much to do about 
nothing. Your thoughts? <laughs> and so, you know, there, there has been quite a bit of, of conversation lately on the interest rate or policy hitting this sort of perfect Goldilocks zone. But actually, rates are at, at the highest levels they've been in decades. And overall, the, the U.S. economy, from a corporate point of view and on an individual point of view, have held up pretty well so far. So it, it honestly is not surprising that, that during a, a, a highly watched uh, talk today, Jerome Powell went out of his way to sort of amplify that fact. Right, that he and his right. the Fed are are currently watching a number of economic factors. Well, and, and you recall his speech last year, which yeah. he discussed, Very we're, we're all going to have all this terrible pain. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where the pain is, but we didn't really get the pain. I mean, at least certainly not in the markets, maybe perhaps in the bond markets. You know, so I think he was well aware of the impact that he would have on the overall, I, I guess, markets. And I want to ask you, What's the impact now on the economy if what he says is true, that rates are going to stay at least at this level for the time being? Maybe we get another rate hike or not. I, I don't really see what the difference is at this point because rates have already gone up so much and they're at this level. The question is, how long are they going to stay here? Excellent point there, Phil. And sort of, you know, part A is that his next Fed meeting to actually talk about rates, a.k.a are they going to raise in about one month is the real news item that I believe most, most market analysts are actually watching. And then two, you know, that is a really excellent point that the overall conversation now is not so much about a, a incremental raise of, of 25 basis points or half of, of 1%. Rather, it really has pivoted, I think, to how long these rates are going to be at these right. higher levels. Um, you said Goldilocks, and for our viewers who may not be familiar with Goldilocks, it, it is a mythical character, right, Goldilocks? Yes. It's, what does that mean? What is the perfect environment that, when you say Goldilocks, what's the perfect environment that the Fed, I guess, is aiming for? I think there is no perfect outcome here, Phil, right, because interest rates, as you know, are, are, a, are, a, are a blunt tool that, that take a long time to actually impact drivers of inflation. And so, honestly, I think going forward, this sort of ideal environment for the Fed is that people are not watching and, and sort of closely analyzing every word coming out of the Fed. But I would say that, that both rates and inflation are going to trend at these higher levels for the foreseeable future. I, I listen to my friends and colleagues here in the office, and the number one complaint that comes up is generally the cost of, of living, right? We're talking about rent, food, um, and these have not gone down by any means. In fact, I would argue that you're seeing rents creep up and costs continue to creep up around the country. Is there a potential case that we would see still stronger than 2% inflation, but at the same time, the economy gets weaker? Wouldn't that put the Fed in a very interesting and precarious position? That is the worst outcome possible, right? And, and yes, absolutely. And I've heard just anecdotally there are conversations now that there is this fear of a uh, wage price sort of hiking paradigm uh, unfolding rather soon, that as wages go up, as, as employees pressure employers to pay them more to cover higher cost of goods and services, that in turn forces prices higher. So right. I do think Jerome Powell really, really had an optimistic view today, but I do think he, he and his team are going to have to raise rates further from here. I mean, I don't have to give you the examples, but all around the country we see um, workers asking for more money. Yep. Um, I mean, I'll just take UPS, for example. Yeah. It is a very significant pay raise they're getting, and we all know, statistically speaking, if you pay people more, they're going to spend it. We, we already know that as a fact. So in, and in other words, as the wages increases, that only puts more pressure on the inflation pressures that we are trying to, to stop. So the really only way to stop this is to either less workers or less pay, but that's something I'm sure the Fed doesn't necessarily want to say, or they certainly don't want to say it. Absolutely right. And so that's why Jerome Powell, he was very cautious in saying that, that, put that sort of his view now is much more nuanced as opposed to back in 2022, and that he and his team have, uh, are going to have to now balance right, interest rates, inflation, employment, average hourly earnings, and 
hours worked per employee. The markets um, reacted today by uh, apparently clapping their hands. I think they were so scared about last year <laughs> that this is probably relief. And we'll see in the coming weeks what ultimately investors think. But do you think this reaction today um, is uh, is the correct one, that the markets seem to be so happy that they're, they're done raising rates and we're just not going to worry about the future yet? I would say there that the overall market reaction has has basically baked in either a, a pause next month or a very incremental raise next month. But 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 a other story that, that has flown under the ra uh, radar is that the SEC has actively called out firms for not mentioning inflation risk in their annual filings and other information out to the market. So it's going to be, I think, pretty inter interesting, interesting to see that as these prices and as rates dominate the overall conversation, how do companies adapt going forward if these rates are higher right. or longer? Well, look, at least the good news is that the rates definitely have come down from when we were yes. talking about 9 and 10 percent. Sean, good to see you, my friend. Uh, have yourself a great weekend. All right, Phil. Thanks.